love of the design. You're a designer. Can we just kind of say, like, you like the, the you like the uniforms, but that's about no, it. No, we we no. I, there, there's a lot of things that I love that I love that I love about Hitler. Oh my God, we're back again. Back again. Back again. Back again. Brothers, sisters, everybody say. I say. I say. I say. Am I original? Yeah. Am I the only one? Yeah. Am I sexual? Yeah. Am I everything you need? You better rock your body now. Naysayers, see now y'all done pissed me off. For real, I try to look out for y'all, that's how you act. Now, so something I don't really talk about much is that I fucking love Kanye West's music. I definitely listen to a lot of other artists, but it's still insane to me how Kanye, he really has nine almost nearly perfect albums just back to back to fucking back. But I only became a fan a little bit after Donda, which apparently was the worst mistake I could possibly make because pretty much the next two years after that, 2022 and 2023, where it's probably some of the worst of his entire career. Really, it was just a giant press tour of him just kind of destroying a lot of his reputation and legacy even more by saying just a bunch of really wild shit and making a bunch of projects that kind of came out half-baked. Something like Don's 2, which in my eyes is at least a pretty solid album hidden under the intense scrutiny of its initial release date because it just wasn't really ready to come out when it came out. Something did stay consistent throughout these times, which is the excitement for something else. The renewed version of Donna 2 to War to a bunch of random Japan session songs and two entirely made up fan albums. The massive deluge of new TikTok fans that came over that, you know, they make fun of his appearance because he doesn't have eyebrows and shit like that. After a ton of random new clips with him and Ty Dolla Sign came out, it was very apparent that something was coming between the two of them. Ty Dolla Sign makes his song worse. Ty Dolla Sign is my worst enemy. Ty Dolla Sign uh, killed my whole family. And holy fuck, bro, already a fucking listening party? Bro, we're fucking done, dude. It's a fucking November. Like, you cancel it, okay? I mean, this is Kanye, so it makes sense and everything. They would release their first single together, which is Vultures. And personally, I didn't have really much of a problem with this track. I feel like everybody kind of does their thing well enough, you know what I mean? But this shit was hammered when it first came out. Nobody liked this song at all. And I don't really see the backlash for this song. I don't think it's that bad, but... In a lot of people's minds, this already painted a pretty bad image for this next upcoming album cycle. With the creation of the YS Spotify account, there was a bunch of random just songs popping up. You know, one named Cool Beat, Lemonade Haze, whatever. And these were all by this dude named uh, Prodi's group. Now he's kind of fake and gay, honestly. He's just kind of, he, he, he just found a way to get into their account and he uploaded a bunch of random tracks, I guess maybe to have fun or to promote some of his friends or something like that. There's nothing behind that. I just kind of feel that way. But not even too far after the release of Vultures, the single, essentially they revealed the entire track list that they were going to have a rave a couple days afterwards. And then that the album was going to release a couple days after that rave too. And this was huge, bro. Everybody I knew was so fucking excited for this. You know what I mean? Uh, the biggest problem was that all this shit was happening on a fucking school night. Even though it was on a school night, I was going to brave it out and try as hard as I possibly fucking could to witness this shit live. Plugging in my computer into my entire TV, you know, just so I could sit back and, and watch it in fucking full widescreen and shit like that. And they didn't even start for like an entire hour. I remember reading a lot of people were disappointed at this point, and kind of I was too because it was just a bunch of random songs. There was a whole DJ set beforehand, but they didn't say this or anything like that. It was already started pretty late. But after that, they were playing pretty much banger after banger after banger. And this full first rave was really, really exciting to me. I was so pumped up for this shit. Because to me, there was nothing like bad about this album that was shown off at least, you know, I was really fucking exhilarated and everything like that. And then the thing ended at like three in the morning, you know, so I had to go to bed super fucking late and I had to wake up like four hours after I went to bed. So when I finally made it to school, I was seriously woozy and unbalanced and also frantically excited for this shit. But then a couple of days later, the second party happened. But this time it was at like four in the morning. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about to stay up that fucking late for this shit okay i'm sorry you know and this one to me was way more disappointing than the first one really i felt like a lot of the tracks they showed off here were either underdeveloped or just kind of uninteresting you know what i mean they just didn't really show off anything they didn't show off their a game with this one i felt like 
and also the fact that I woke up with like a headache and I, I really just wanted to die at that moment probably didn't help either. But it t as it turns out, they were partying literally all night long. So I opened my fucking phone, downloaded an Instagram for this shit, and then I, I basically almost immediately saw this shit. And Drake, because nigga! Hey, hold on, hold on, be Drake. quiet while I'm talking, baby! Drake! I and honestly, for Kanye rants, this one, it wasn't even that bad, honestly. It didn't do that much damage to him. The whole thing was probably just caused by sleep deprivation and alcohol anyway. After all this shit went down, my enthusiasm and excitement for this album, it kind of deteriorated a bit. Because, I, like I said, I wasn't really feeling a lot of the stuff they were showing off at this second party. I felt like it was kind of underdeveloped. But... After the 15th, it was supposed to drop. And it never fucking dropped. But they didn't say anything. Nothing. They were completely fucking silent. There was a new release date on iTunes, but that was just confirmed to be a fucking placeholder. So basically, there was little to no communication at all to what happened. I mean, it was obvious that they were going to work on it. But eventually, in comes a new character, DJ Ferris. Basically, him and Kanye have been friends for a while. He's a DJ in Chicago. But Kanye gave him the opportunity to uh, preview some new songs, you know? And these ones I was way, way more excited for, honestly. Time Moving Slow specifically, I felt like it showed off a new side to the album, you know? It's sort of house and sort of um, industrial in a way. And I really love how he combined those two things. That's pretty, sounds pretty great. The silence of the rest of the album was never acknowledged. So basically for a few days, a shit ton of rumors that the album was canceled or postponed or whatever was rampant, you know? The 31st, like I said, was proven not to be a real date. And it was just complete and utter fucking silence. And honestly, this this right here was the worst part of this goddamn rollout. Because the only time we got new information was from this guy named Dealey. And I'm not knocking Dealey, but really just the way that we got it is just drip fed, just a tiny bit of information. It's so fucking agonizing. This but eventually, thankfully, this fucking dry spell would end. So after DJ Ferris came back with uh, like a new song and then a new version of another song, JPEG Mafia just launched a ton of fucking tweets at Kanye, calling his album ass, saying that he can go fuck himself, basically. And then this shit dropped. This to me really cemented how much longer of a wait we probably have. Because it was evident they weren't just gonna hang out together. They were obviously probably gonna make some of the music. But then BOOM! Fucking finally, new real dates confirming that we were actually gonna fucking get this shit. Eventually. Uh, but this was the first time that he himself directly uploaded it. Instead of someone else who he's literally making the album with directly. After this, there was like a, a small lull for about two weeks until Charlie Wilson was honored by having his name on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So there was this big ceremony and um, nothing happened, you know. Kanye, he, there was like Tyler Curry who was there and then Kanye, you know, he left. Um, he was giving a stroll and then this TMZ interviewer walked up to him and she asked him like, Hi Kanye, how are you doing? He's like, oh, cool. And he's like, you know, here, take this. And he gave a TMZ reporter like a free phone. Was that a dumbass, disrespectful question to come ask a grown ass superhero? Okay, so maybe not. Basically, she walked up and asked like a pretty stupid fucking question about his wife. And uh, he was not fucking happy at all. You know, I mean, honestly, for good reason, you know. And he honestly, he cooked this bitch to a crisp and fucking ultra 4K resolution with fucking Stanley Cooper directing him with fucking, fucking fucking 3D like mm -hmm. this really caused quite a stir online this event really catalyzed the vultures release to a lot of people that I feel like weren't inside the uh, the fandom you know what I mean I guess you could say um, I, I think it reminded and notified a lot of people that new shit was coming out you know what I mean so that's why I think it's a pretty important event Kanye and Travis's relationship is pretty well known and documented and on the same goddamn tour they'd already done this still nobody knew before this you know all we figured out was that there was a special guest coming to the show, and then fucking Runaway started, bro. This shit was immediately cemented into my mind. Kanye's up there with fucking Michael Myers masking his hits, and this shit really showed me how far we'd come as a fucking people, as a fucking race. The internet is the ultimate hive of scum and villainy, but like at the end of the day, it's really just here to bring people together so you can find other communities that like the shit that you like. And that's exactly what this made me feel. And finally, on the day of fucking reckoning, I was there sitting at work, refreshing every fucking second. And there it fucking was! It was finally fucking over! People were so fucking paranoid of cancellation because pretty much the album was supposed to release the week of, but nothing had been said at all. But right as the fucking lights were dimming and everything seemed lost, there it fucking comes. There was a real date, an entire stadium set up where you could experience it live for the first time. And it was on the fucking school night, and I, I live hours away from fucking Chicago, so I can't fucking go. Immediately after the show, for some reason it was $20. I mean, 
come on bro obviously i bought and paid 20 dollars and you know i watched it um on veeps i didn't watch it anywhere else but uh holy fuck bro i might be a little bitch but i was crying three times i was in tears three times during this fucking shit none of them really because i was sad maybe so good but also just because the sheer like grandiosity of some of these and i was just so fucking surprised i was like damn bro this is really like getting to me you know in so fucking way Big forgiveness carnival and so good they they had me in such different fucking like feelings such different moods it was like i felt like i was bipolar in this fucking listening party i was expecting pretty much the exact same track list just without like new body you know and obviously i was hoping for some songs to get changed around and all the songs i felt were mediocre before or needed an improvement here are fucking phenomenal bro they're just high in the sky you know what i mean something that's crazy is that everybody i thought it was a fine track you know what i mean i thought it was okay from the original track list but now it's just it's just kind of not even ass it's just like all right you know it's just so much less it's so much less exciting so much less experimental on the final track list and after this show it was so fucking crazy and the album dropped right at 12 and everybody was so excited and you know you got to like listen to the album as you were falling asleep like it was a really really special moment okay so maybe not but apparently right before the show was gonna end anyways the stream got cut off and everyone was kicked out of the building it screwed a lot of fear because even though people had heard that basically every song was completely finished they were still scared that it, it would not release you know because uh uh because when the stream cut off the last thing he said was bipolar anti-zygmite i think it was just really really bad timing but like yeah that would be really bad that'd be funny but it'd be really bad if that's the reason why the stream got, stream got cut off so obviously we had to wait all day the next day for the other listing event in new york city and this one was obviously a lot less grand i wasn't in tears a single time so i'm not a little bitch anymore but even though none of the songs were new, you know, I still got to hear them again in the stadium setting. So the legendary god of since Mike Dean himself had worked on the songs a bit, and they'd be improved, and you could notice small, tiny details that, like, I think paid was slightly different, you know. But for some fucking reason, they didn't play Slide, even though he's literally known for his fucking sense. And now he was Slide would be completely perfect right after So Good, because, you know, it's quiet, and you just heard a super beautiful song, and then boom, right, right, you hear those fucking senses. <gasps> It didn't release here either, though, so the reaction was obviously much less fearful because it was even more obvious that, you know, Kanye had Mike Dean come in and then Mike Dean listened to the songs, changed a little bit up, and then he was fine with what they had. I was pretty tired, so I fell asleep at like 1 o'clock. I'm not gonna go out of my normal sleep schedule just to stay up, because I, I knew he was just gonna drop it at like 3 in the fucking morning. But when I woke up the next morning, there it fucking was. Alright, so congratulations, you've reached the final review stage of the album. So personally, I'm not sure how I feel about it. This is just uh, my initial thoughts. You know what I mean? This shit's really only been out for two days. I think it's, it's, it's kind of solid, you know what I mean? There's a lot of highs and lows, and let's get into it. So Stars starting off pretty fucking great. Stars to me does what it needs to do as an intro. You know, it's beautiful. I like how grand it is. I like the chorus, you know what I mean? It sounds really nice. I'm gonna put it in A tier, just because to me, it doesn't really do anything above that though. Tim keeps to my life is it's apparently insanely catchy because yesterday this was in my head all fucking day you know what i mean the production is great i love the almost winter vibes i like how cold it is india love though her vocals are i'm really mixed on because like sometimes i like how she sounds but at the same time she sounds like a dying pig sometimes you know with the Wah! for some reason she holds the Wah! very very long so it sounds kind of off but still i'm just getting eight tier now paid this is this is where we get the real good shit to me i've always loved this fucking song and they've just they just improved this even more a lot of people don't like the new drums i love the new drums i feel like it adds an extra oomph to it you know i always i get in, i get into it a lot you know what i mean so especially my favorite part is at the end when he's like go your friends let's all get paid friday night let's all get paid you know you know what i mean so paid's going s tier now talking now talking is one i'm kind of sick of hearing at this point but objectively outside of that nothing wrong with it it's a lot of fun you know what i mean well personally ty's part once again is amazing it's way better than the first part i feel like but still the production is crazy the song's a bit off the wall you know so you know i'm gonna put that beat here now back to me another crazy ass one ty goes fucking crazy on this on the chorus kanye to me i always love the fucking 
big booty bitch he's gonna fall off the sky i'm not gonna say the full thing i don't remember the full thing but then fucking freddie gibbs ties up this whole fucking track it's really just perfect you know what i mean it's funny it it, it, it it's really evident why they just haven't changed this in like three months because it was perfect like three months ago this shit could have released fucking four months ago probably and it would have been great you know what i mean so this shit's going straight in s tier again now hood rat some a lot of people are mixed about this one um uh, to me I, I never heard any problems with mixing i can hear kanye's vocals fine on this uh i really like the chaotic feel and i like how the the instrumental is chaotic but then kanye and, and ty they come in singing and their singing is really well organized you know it's like a nice sort of um clashing of ideas you know what i mean but like in, the, in a great way i'm gonna put this a tier again you know what i mean now do it i'm really worried about because when i first heard this I thought this shit was great, you know what I mean? I was fucking jumping and shit. But then the last couple days that I'm hearing this, I'm like bouncing to it less. You know what I mean? I'm getting into it less. So I feel like this shit's gonna grow off me really fast. I don't know what it is. It, it's really nice. I like the part when they start adding in like all the, the mixing tables or whatever the fuck they're called and all the fucking cowbells. And it's like, you know what I mean? I really like that fucking part. YG goes crazy on this. That's his part. Ty goes crazy on this. Everybody does their thing, but I just don't get into it like I like I uh, did initially. So I'm kind of worried about that. Honestly, it's going B tier for me. You know, I feel like it's gonna start in the down here. Paperwork is like the co is the coolest fucking thing I've ever heard ever, bro. I, I remember listening in the stadium. I was like, bro, what the fuck is this? It's so fucking cool. Apparently, it's some like Brazilian form of of music or something like that. Uh, it just reminds me of some old um, like I don't know, fucking Sega Master System type sound, you know what I mean, I really, really fucking like this song, Quavo goes fucking crazy, Kanye goes fucking crazy, like I said, the instrumental is fucking insane, I love the fucking drums on this, it's going S tier, bro, same thing, Burn, something you should know about me, late registration, top three Kanye, in my opinion, so this is just a portal to fucking 30 years ago, 20 years ago, not, not even 20 years ago, it's so fucking groovy and nice, and you, know, you just want to fucking dance to it. I don't know somebody who wouldn't like this track, you know what I mean? It's Once again, it's perfect. This shit could have released four months ago. It'd be perfect. Oh, which, because it did start on she, her body's like the wild, wild west. It's not perfect. Like, no, it's fucking perfect, okay? Shit's going S tier. Also, it is so crazy to me how this is the first song they made, um, and that they weren't about to include it on this shit. Now, fuck something. Uh, personally, honestly, I would have liked the... the the original with the you know the almost pablo production pablo from down the two not life of pablo but this one is fine too the i'm in the chipmunk section i'll be honest it's pretty fucking cool i just don't like how the rest of the production just drops around it i don't like how it's just whenever he starts speaking in the album the chipmunk's voice it's just everything else just goes away completely I feel like they should change that up a bit but other than that bro it's pretty good it's pretty good uh travis does great on it love travis so vultures is another one i don't really get the hate for i don't think it's a terrible ass song uh but it's not a great ass song honestly personally i kind of do prefer the havoc version just because it's a little more it's kind of eerie i kind of like that kind of like how it's more eerie and simplistic but ty's vocals don't really work on it it's gonna be the first c tier honestly probably the worst on the project carnival another fucking insane one dude hearing this originally i was like it's fine you know hearing this now it's like bro, that was fucking insane dude and it really is fucking insane dude everybody does their goddamn thing i really fucking love the inclusion of the crowd singing the main melody instead of just synth because whenever i first heard this i figured that kanye's verse would be something like keep it burning or piss on your grave or go to the moon because it sounded like that type of beat you know it sounded like you go kind of crazy on it you go like fast you know be like yeah i'm avoiding you you know what i mean <laughs> But he did do that. He he went like the opposite direction. Where it's like a stadium type song. You know what I mean? It's gigantic. It's fucking larger than life. For that, it's going fucking S tier. Come on, come on, come on. Beg forgiveness. Another one, bro. I was like, this is ass. Originally, I was like, this is ass. This is ass. But they're going to approve this. You know, just because of the fact that it was just Chris Brown singing on it. I was like, is it going to change anything? You know. And personally, I really fucking love how it's just Chris Brown singing and it's just the bass because it really makes you think about that. Uh, like about the words he's saying, you know what I mean? It makes you get in this mood. It really just like puts you right into the song, you know what I mean? But bro, did they improve this shit? Holy fucking shit, dude. Kanye's verse is fucking crazy. He's like a slithery fucking snake. He's like ice, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then Ty's part is fucking insane dude i don't know how they fucking manage this it, it, you feel like you're in a fucking circle of people and they're fucking yelling at you like pay forgiveness and ty comes in 
strained fucking vocals. His performance is insane here. His performance is insane. I haven't heard a song that's performed this fucking amazingly in a while, okay? And I, I do listen to a lot of music, you know what I mean? I'm not just a Kanye dick writer, right? I do listen to a lot of music. And this shit is fucking insane. This shit's going as here, bro. Ty went crazy on that. Good dog. Ty, dude. Another fucking one. I'm gonna look like a, a Kanye dick writer, but bro, it's fucking perfect. Have you ever heard the song Sanctuary by Joji? Song reminds me of it, but... It, it, the pounding emotions, you know, it really, it, like I said, it, it got to me. I was crying the first time I fucking heard this song and a couple other times, to be honest, because it's so, once again, it, you just get immediately fucking put in, you know, Patrick Bateman, bro, he's literally me. Like, this is genuinely exactly how I feel about when, I, when I'm when i listening to this song. I'm like, bro, bro, have I been listening to my, have I been living my life the wrong way, like, this whole time, bro? Like, what's going on, dude? Like, what is wrong with me? Bro, this fucking shit. Another Esther, another Esther, another Esther. Now, problematic. I'm a people were mixed on. I feel like the beginning is kind of all right. It's kind of, it's good. You know, it has good production. They do their thing, right? But then the, the song doesn't really hit its peak until they start getting to the fucking horn section. And it just makes me want to fucking salute to our soldiers. You know what I mean? That's all, once again, that's all I want to do when I hear this shit. But overall, as an overall package, I think it's just kind of, eh. Honestly, I'm going to put this shit in B, B tier. I think it's just kind of eh as an overall package. So King, once again, it's very... Uh, so a problem I have this, with this and problematic is that in my mind, they're like exactly like... Like these two songs could be the same thing. Uh, or like one song and I, I wouldn't have really be able to tell the difference. You know what I mean? They got like the same sort of feeling. Got the same sort of atmosphere, you know? And I mean, I like this one about as much as I like problematic. Really, the only thing is that problematic... Or that this... Really, the only thing is that King doesn't have cool horns like Problematic does, but still, uh, still an all right track, you know. So I'm gonna put B tier, right? It's, it's brother. Throughout all of these events, Donna Two, bipolar anti-Semitism, war, most likely, TikTok fans, can you be man across the sea? Change, yes, okay. Kanye's ass crack, November third, I'm a single, views, two raves. This being Chicago, my brother. The dry season, JPEG Mafia, Z Pods, the Team Z Blow Up, the final stretch, the final two LPs, and, and in my opinion, a pretty great fucking album. Ooh.